Hello, today I am going to demonstrate a project named Hepatitis Patient Prediction Analysis using AdaBoost algorithm. Now going towards some brief introduction about Hepatitis Patient Prediction. Hepatitis is one of the health problems that is infectious in, each, in nature, common in the whole world which will cause around 1.5 million deaths around the world each year. Hepatitis mainly affects liver which will cause the damage due to six types of different viruses namely Hepatitis A, B, C, D, E and G. These viruses are also known as HAV, HBV, HCV, HEV and HGV. Various determining techniques and machine learning techniques are considered for designing the automatic system or you can say that the decision support system for the diagnosis of hepatitis patients. Now, in this project, we are basically using an AdaBoost algorithm for the diagnosis of hepatitis patient from the historical hepatitis patient's data. Now, what is this AdaBoost algorithm? AdaBoost algorithm is basically a boosting algorithm. In this algorithm, weights are assigned to each of the learning object. After the training of the classifier with the decision stump learning algorithm, the weights of the learning objects is updated so that the next classifier pay more attention to the object if it is not correctly classified by the learning classifier. That means in the boosting algorithm, initially we will assign same weight to each and every learning object. When the training of that particular instances or that particular learning object is going on, there is one learning algorithm inside data boost algorithm. That algorithm is known as the decision stump learning algorithm. It will basically train the data set and basically calculates or you can say that basically evaluates an error for that particular model. If the error rate for that particular model is quite high, then we need to increase the weight for that particular instance or that particular model. So that in the, when, in the next iteration, uh, that, that particular classifier will pay more attention to the object. That means it will pay some more attention to the object if that was previously incorrectly classified. The assigned weights is used to vote for the each classifier. That means if the error rate of that particular classifier is between the range of 0 0.1 to 0 0.4, then same weight is added, same vote is total votes or you can say that the highest total weight is the final class or you can say that is the final prediction class or the predictive class of that particular learning object. Now what is the flow for the whole project? The whole project flow is that we first need to collect the data set from UCA repository. After that we need to pre-process or filter that data in order to remove re missing values from that filter the noise outliers these these are basically some common uh, pre processing techniques which we can apply to each and every data set after that we will classify that filter data using the adaboost algorithm after that this adaboost algorithm will classify the data into two two uh, into two basically the class labels first one is the tested positive and second one is tested negative that means the person who is suffering from hepatitis disease and the person who is not suffering from the hepatitis disease after that, we will analyze the performance of the AdaBoost algorithm. Now, the tool used for this project is Java JDK, NetBeans and Weka as an external library. Now, I am going to demonstrate the same project into NetBeans. What we will do is that I have created the object over project over here that is Appetitis Prediction. We will right click to the graphical user interface that is the main file and click to the run file button. After that, we have 
here uh, the browse button through which I can basically the browse the data set. The data set which I will browse is that is data set F. Successfully loaded that data set then this data set will appear over here the list of the data set. After that the content of that data set is shown over here. Here the output class 1 denotes positive and 2 denotes negative. That means 1 denotes the person or the patients having the hepatitis disease and other denotes the patients who are not suffering from the hepatitis disease. This data set is collected from the UCA repository. After that we will click to the next button and here we have replace missing value filters like if we have some, some value missing in the data set that value is basically replaced with some value or with some mean value of that particular column. After that we will click to the next button in order to apply the ADA boost algorithm. Now what ADA boost algorithm has denoted over here is that we have total of 155 patients data. Out of these 152 patients data are correctly classified that will correspond to 98% accuracy and only 3% 3 patients data is incorrectly classified that corresponds to 1.9% inaccuracy. The Kappa statistics here in case of this is very good that means it, it is very close to 1 that is 0.95. Now what is this Kappa statistic? Kappa statistic is, is basically the correlation or you can say that the matching percentage of the actual values and the predicted value. Actual value is the value which are basically in the training data set. These are 2, 2, 1. And the predicted value is the value which are basically calculated by the adder boost algorithm over here. After that we have error rates and we have detailed accuracy by class. In, in, this, in this accuracy by class denotes true positive rate, false positive rate, precision, recall left measure, ROC area. All these are basically the detailed accuracy by class parameters. After that we have confusion matrix. Confusion matrix denotes is that the sum of diagonal elements that is 43 plus 109 corresponds to correctly classified instances. That means true positive plus true negative corresponds to correctly classified instances and false positive plus false negative corresponds to incorrectly classified instances. In the similar way we can calculate the true positive false positive parameters from Precision, recall, F major all can be calculated from the confusion matrix. That's all with this session. Thank you so much for listening.